Thank you, Professor Swanson. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, though different title was presented, presented in the printed booklet, we thought uh, the current title, the Cialis lactosis in HMO, they are broad spectrum application, fits the uh, fiber symposium's interest. So we have changed it slightly. We are sorry for the inconvenience this m might have caused. Uh, this is our first time in fi Fiverr Symposium, and we would like to thank the organizing committee, and especially Dr. Joe, for personally taking care of all the participants, and especially from Korea. Well, here in this presentation session, I will be discussing about Ciala lactose and the, some of the applications or the research findings from other groups and from our group as well. So this uh, presentation will cover introduction, some known effects of Ciala lactose, Gene Kim's own research, and the safety evaluation that we have carried out for 3SL, SL, that, is, that stands for the Ciala lactose. Well, coming to the introduction, Ciala lactose, as we all know, that is the key human milk oligosaccharide, which is composed of sialic acid bound to lactose molecule. And we, the Ginchem, are the only company that manufactures three Ciala lactose and six Ciala lactose in bulk quantity. Talking about its presence in the milk, as our former speaker also talked about uh, the milk oligosaccharides. So here, basically, the human milk, which contains about 5 to 15 gram per liter of human milk oligosaccharide, it contains up to 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 gram per liter of 6 Ciala lactose and 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 gram per liter of 3 Ciala lactose. Looking at the bovine milk, the concentration of Ciala lactose is very less. Some of the known effects of Ciala lactose, where I will be uh, showing you the research publications from various groups. So basically here, I have categorized as uh, prebiotic effects, brain development effect, muscle development, and the antimicrobial effects of Cialylated oligosaccharides that will include both 3 and 6 SL. Coming to this prebiotic effect, this research publication was conducted by Professor Jeffrey Gordon and his team at Center for Gut Microbiome and Nut Nutrition Research. This uh, research says that the cialylated milk oligosaccharides are responsible for the promotion of microbiota-dependent growth in models of infant undernutrition. This research was carried out with the Malawian, Malawian uh, infants, and it shows that the cialylated bovine milk oligosaccharides produced a microbiota-dependent development of lean body mass changed the bone morphology and altered liver, muscle, and brain metabolism in such a way that indicates for a greater ability to utilize nutrients for anabolism. Uh, also, cialylated oligosaccharides during uh, promoting this microbiota-dependent growth impacts the liver, muscle, and brain metabolism, but they also found that uh, another fiber, inulin, that does not promote the growth in the germ-free mice. Similarly, the another effect that uh, CLI lactose <coughs> has is the brain development effect. This is found to be uh, increasing the brain gangliosides and GM3. This experiment, sorry, this research was carried out by the Japanese group and they checked the effects of feeding Ciala lactose and galactosylated N-acetyl neuraminic acid on the swimming 
learning ability and brain lipid composition of adult rats. In this research work, what they did is they fed the adult rats with about, about one gram per kilogram per day of galactosylated and acetylneuraminic acid or sialylated oligosaccharide, sialylactose. Uh, in, in the mixture, it contained about 87% 3SL and 13% 6SL. During this research, what they have found is the concentrations of gangliocytes and GM3 in brain were significantly higher from 1.5 to 2 times in the groups which were fed with Ciala lactose or the galactosylated n acetylneuraminic acid. And they claim or they say that their conclusion was the feeding of Ciala lactose or galactosylated n acetylneuraminic acid to adult rats raised the brain gangliocyte and GM3 contents, which may be related to improvement in swimming behavior, swimming learning behavior of the rats. Another example of the research finding that shows this Ciala lactose is responsible for brain development and has a direct effect on the gut brain axis is by Jacobi and his groups. This research finding or this research aimed to determine whether different isomers of Ciala lactose enrich brain sialic acid and modulate the microbiome of developing neonatal pigs, piglets. So in this experiment, what they have done is a day old pigs were fed with six different diets. And among them, four different diets contained Ciala lactose, either three Ciala lactose or six Ciala lactose up, uh, of two different doses, two grams or four grams. And this, these diets were fed three times a day for 21 days, and the research findings show that gangliocyte-bound sialic acid in the corpus callosum of pigs fed with 2 gram of 3SL or 6SL increased by 15%. Similarly, the gangliocyte-bound sialic acid in the cerebellum of pigs fed with 3SL, 4 gram 3SL per liter increased 10%. Besides that, formula supplemented with Ciala lactose also elicited changes in microbial communities in the proximal and distal colons that could have important health benefits of the developing neonate. So the final conclusion was supplementation of formula with 3 or 6 SL may positively affect the neonate, serving as a source of sialic acid for the neurologic development and promoting beneficial microbiota. Similarly, the <clears throat> Ciala lactose also helps in the muscle development. This is a research carried out by Javnis group for the treatment of GNE myopathy. GNE myopathy is a severe muscle disease that affects adults. And the efficacy of sialic acid supplementation on symptomatic old GNE myopathy mice that have an ongoing active muscle degeneration was examined during this research work. And what they did is they fed six Ciala lactose in two doses, 10, uh, 100 milligram per kg per day or 1,000 milligram per kg per day, or free sialic acid, 1,000 milligram per kg per day, and this feeding was done for 30 weeks by oral method and what they found during this research was treatment with 6SL led to marked restoration of hypocyalization in muscle and consequently to robust improvement in the muscle size, contractile parameters and pathology as compared to sialic acid. So they concluded with that GNE myopathy can be treated even at a progressive stage, and 6SL, 6 Ciala lactose, has more remarkable advantage than the free sialic acid.
providing a conceptual proof for clinical use in patients. Another effect is the microbial, antimicrobial effect. And this shows that, this research shows that the sialylated fractions of the milk oligosaccharides, these are uh, partially responsible for binding of enterotoxigenic and the europathogenic E. coli human strains. And when the HMOs are desialylated, this effect is not observed. Well, coming to the gene chem's own research with Cialis lactose, here I present a preliminary data for the avian influenza virus treatment using Cialis lactose, both 3 and 6 SL. Avian influenza virus, uh, as we all know, this is a very severe serious case or serious issue in most of the Asian countries. Even in uh, Korea last year, more than three million domestic birds were dumped because of this avian influenza virus. And basically talking about the influenza virus, there are three different types of influenza virus, types A, B, and C. And aquatic birds, these are the primary natural reservoir for most of the most subtypes of influenza virus A. As we can also see from this uh, diagram how the influenza virus gets transmitted to the uh, human or the mammals. The image on the right side shows the influenza, how influenza virus binds to differentially linked sialic acid. And this is the red circled part where the influenza virus prefers to bind with the avian receptor or human receptor. And the avian receptor is the alpha 2,3 Cialis lactose that is, <clears throat> that is 3 Cialis lactose, whereas the human receptor is 6 Cialis lactose. For the avian influenza virus inhibition, uh, hemagglutinin inhibition assay, what we did is we selected 13 different strains of six different subtypes of avian influenza virus, and the assay was carried out. When assay was carried out, 3SL was found more uh, potent or better than the 6SL. And further, for the in vivo experiments, we uh, selected H9N2 virus strain. And we had 30 SPF chickens, specific pathogen-free chickens, for the in vivo study, uh, subdivided into five different groups, with two groups, subgroup A and subgroup C, being inoculated, uh, inoculated with virus whereas subgroup B and subgroup D were inoculated with a mixture of virus and 3SL, 3CL lactose, one time a day for nine days. Uh, in the case of subgroup B and subgroup D, where CL lact uh, lactose mixture was inoculated with virus, the inoculation was done after three, 30 minutes of mixing of this virus and the CL lactose. And in this experiment, what we see, or what we found is the subgroup D, which was inoculated with 50 microliter of 0.8 hemagglutinin uh, unit of virus plus 50 microliter of 500 milligram Cialis lactose. Uh, the chickens, no, virus were, uh, no viruses were detected in this subgroup of chicken, whereas in the case of subgroup A, and subgroup B or subgroup C, the viruses were observed in the oral and oral and the cloacal swabs. Um, though the subgroup B was fed with, uh, sorry, inoculated with this uh, mixture of Ciala lactose and virus, what we saw is the viral count was almost similar to the subgroup A and subgroup B. And 
we wanted to know further what, uh, what is the thing going on inside the body of the chicken. And when we observed the thymus tissues, we found that the organs in subgroup A, where no CRL lactose was fed or inoculated, they had the organs damaged, where blots could be seen, whereas in the case of subgroup B, the organs were not damaged or they were normal. Further, in the uh, ELISA assay, what we found is the antibody is generated in all the subgroups except subgroup D. And this proves that the CLL lactose is inhibiting the avian influenza virus efficiently. And we believe that the mechanism for neutralization of this virus is by the cleansing mechanism or washing mechanism where the CLL lactose binds to the virus and then it's, it gets washed away, from the, washed away from the chicken's body. So this is the preliminary type of research that it's further uh, re research is going on. And next one is the safety evaluation of 3SL where we have conducted several tests for its uh, safety. 3SL is uh, marketed in the name of Cialic, uh, Cialic 3, that is the trade name for Cialic lactose marketed by Gene Kim. Talking about the various tests or the experiments that we have conducted here for its safety evaluation, bacterial liver's mutation test say, uh, proved that it is non-mutagenic. Acute oral toxicity study in rats for 14 days showed that the lethal dose is above 20 gram per kg body weight. Similarly, 13-week subchronic toxicity study shows that the NOAEL is greater than 2,000 milligram per kg. Dose escalation single dose toxicity study in beagle dogs showed that the maximum tolerance dose is more than 2,000 milligram per kg, and our piglet study is going on. And another one is the human trial in healthy volunteers with 48 adults that we conducted for four weeks, and they were fed with 12 gram of three CLL lactose three times a day, and four gram every, uh, per, per time. And what we found is the three CLL lactose sodium salt is well tolerated and it doesn't show any major side effects. So with these all evidences, we claim that the three SL sodium salt that is manufactured by Ginkame is safe for human consumption as a food additive. These are the various references that uh, have been uh, are used for the preparation of this presentation. And thank you for your attention. If any question. We have time for maybe one or two quick questions, if there are. Any? I have a question, Jennifer Du from AIDT. So the study you showed is when you mix your acidic, uh, your, your product yeah. with... Yeah, Cialal lactose product with the virus. Right. First mix it, mix it and then wait for about 30 minutes and then inoculate the chicken. That's right. Uh, what happens if the chicken get infected first and mm -hmm. then you give this uh, your product, will that have any effect? Uh, as I said before, thank you for the question. Uh, this is the preliminary data that we have and we are carrying out that kind of research as well in near future. So we will get this uh, result probably in near future. All right, thank you. Thank you, sir.